Now at six, a listening session turns into a shouting match. An emotional crowd voices concern about policing in Portland. Something's got to change, and it starts now. How the chaotic meeting led to a few actual solutions. Empire star Jussie Smollett is out on bond after allegedly reporting a fake hate crime for publicity. Plus, we've been introducing you to Oregon lottery winners all week in our Instant Millionaire series. So what do they all have in common? Our Kyla Boshi shares his discoveries. And Rod is back on the road. This morning, he's kicking off the start of the Wizard World Comic Con. KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. And we start now at 6.01 with a live look outside. It is Friday, February 27th. Congratulations to making it through the end of the work week. <laughs> and as Brenda Braxton just mentioned a moment ago, <clears throat> let me clear my throat. <clears> throat. As Brenda Braxton just mentioned a moment ago, Wizard World Comic Con is happening this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. And who's there to cover it for us this morning? None other than Rod Hill. Rod on the road. What do you have for us this hour, Mr. Rodney? All right, so this half hour, we're going to meet one of the artisans that uh, just makes little uh, trinkets and jewelry and, and things from the movies and, of course, comics. But this is from the newest movie just out not too long ago, Mary Poppins Returns. It says just a spoonful of sugar, and then, of course, you see the spoon. It's only $25. Isn't that adorable? I mean, I just love it. Okay. Weather-wise, what's going on? We have light rain now hitting the coast. Uh, that's going to be moving into Portland, but not until we get closer to lunchtime. So let's go to the uh, bus stop. We did drop down to freezing last night, but we are dry, so not really seeing any issues with that. Uh, kids will be in full rain gear because by lunchtime recess, around 40 degrees, rain moving in. When they get out of school, uh, could be a fairly steady rain at 3 p.m. with temperatures around 43 degrees. Lacey, wouldn't you love to be wearing just a spoonful of sugar? Come on, it's adorable. Yes, will it make me sweeter? Like, I hope that it helps with my attitude, maybe. <laughs> of course it I will. Can't. Thank you. <laughs> All right, the freeways look good. We do have this problem. This is I-5 southbound. It looks like a stalled semi, possibly, over to the right-hand uh, shoulder. So traffic is slowing down a little bit, but really it's not making too much of an impact. Uh, things look good up in Vancouver on I-5 southbound between Mill Plain and the Interstate Bridge. So again, just that problem there at Lombard slowing you down a little bit. Things look good on I-84. Uh, some minor brake tapping as you approach the I-5 split, but again, Freeway's looking pretty good, Brenda. All right, thanks, Lacey. It's 6.03, breaking overnight. There's major damage at a Beaverton apartment complex after a carport caught fire. Check out these photos near Southwest 139th and Farmington Road. Firefighters were called just before 2 a.m. The fire damaged six cars and the outside of the building. No one was injured, though. Investigators are working to determine the cause. Well, that was the scene inside Maranatha Church where Portland police held a community meeting last night. Hundreds of people showed up and disruptions were so intense at one point it almost cut the discussion short. The meeting was called after the community learned of text messages between Portland Police Lieutenant Jeffrey Nia and Joey Gibson of the right wing group Patriot Prayer. Critics say the messages were unprofessional and showed they had a friendly relationship. But the union representing Lieutenant Nia says he was just doing his job by gathering intel. Some at the listening session recognized that and others did not. People are collaborating with right-wing white supremacists who have engaged in a two-year campaign of violence. When we looked at those emails, we saw a cop doing his job. The most volatile disruption of the night came when a woman who associates with Patriot Prayer rushed the stage. She was stopped and asked to leave and officers eventually escorted her away. Coming up at 630 this morning, we will take a close look at recently released text messages between Nia and left wing protest leaders. It's six minutes after, or pardon me, four minutes after six o'clock now, and Vancouver police have identified the officer who shot and killed a 16-year-old this week. Corporal Roger Evans has been with the department now for more than 20 years, and he's held several positions during that time. This video right here is from 2007 when KGW profiled then Officer Evans and his canine. So we also dug into our archives about other stories we've covered on him. We learned that while off-duty in 2007, Evans pulled a gun on a butcher. 
A commander reprimanded him at the time, but prosecutors declined to press charges. The Vancouver Police Union sent us a statement about Evans and that incident. And that statement reads, the Vancouver Police Officers Guild sees no material correlation between a 12 year old incident that was thoroughly reviewed and the incident from two days ago. The union also said it has no doubt Corporal Evans actions this week were consistent with both state law and department policy. Right now, Corporal Evans is on critical incident leave, which is standard protocol. It's 6.05, time for the national headlines in your morning rush. Today, House Democrats are working to block President Trump's national emergency declaration. Even though the bill is expected to pass, President Trump can veto it. He issued the national emergency to help finance his border wall after Congress only gave him a fraction of the $6 billion he requested. 16 states, including Oregon, are suing the president over that declaration. A federal judge is putting a gag order on Trump associate Roger Stone. It comes after he posted a picture on Instagram of the judge with a target next to her face. Stone faces several charges stemming from the Russia investigation. And a strike by public school teachers in Oakland, California is entering its second day. The teachers are demanding a 12% pay raise, but the district is offering a 7% raise plus a one-time bonus. Schools there do remain open, staffed by non-union employees and substitute teachers. And take a look at this stunning video from Brooklyn. You see that blue car drive onto the sidewalk, coming just inches from the kids there getting off their school bus. Wow. Luckily, no one got hurt. Apparently, the driver got impatient sitting in traffic and decided to take an alternate route. Police have found the car involved, but they have not made an arrest. And Hollywood is gearing up for a very big weekend. The biggest of all, Sunday is the Academy Awards. The show won't have a host this year. That's only happened one other time, which was back in 1989. And that telecast was widely considered the worst Oscar show <laughs> ever. No pressure. And that was your morning rush. <laughs> all right, this next story is uh, one that's caught headlines across the country. I know a lot of our viewers are talking about it as well. As we learn new details this morning about Jesse Smollett, he's the actor who's accused of staging an attack on himself. Yeah, our Christine Pitamonich is following the developments this morning. And Christine, what we're learning is just absolutely bizarre. Good morning, guys. Yeah, it kind of sounds like something from a movie. Actor Jesse Smollett was arrested, posted bail yesterday, and reportedly he went back to the Empire set where he works and apologized to his cast members, denying the allegations against him. He's accused of filing a false police report, claiming he was attacked in a hate crime. Police say he first mailed himself a bogus death threat. When that didn't work, investigators say he hired two men he knew to attack him, paying them with a $3,500 check, even giving them $100 to buy supplies for the ruse. Detectives say Smollett and the brothers spoke by phone directly before, after, and in the days following the made-up attack. They say Smollett hoped it all would all be caught on camera. Prosecutors say Smollett was unhappy with his salary on the show and was seeking publicity. But when we discovered the actual motive, quite frankly, it, it pissed everybody off to stage a hate crime of that nature when he knew as a celebrity it would get a lot of attention. It's just a... So at first, the president sympathized with Smollett, but yesterday he tweeted out this. What about MAGA and the tens of millions of people you insulted with your racist and dangerous comments? Then the actor's legal team writes in part, Mr. Smollett enjoys the presumption of innocence. We intend to conduct a thorough investigation and to mount an aggressive defense. Smollett is expected back in court in mid-March. Back to you. All right, Christine, thank you very much. It is 6.09. Chris McGinnis.